Welcome to Rogers Center, the first game of three game series against the reigning world champion Boston Red Sox. John Farrell's ball club coming off a 14 to 5 loss at the hands of the New York Yankees last night. Let's take a look at their lineup. Esther Majora is the leadoff hitter, and that's been a problem area for them all season long. And Dave Ortiz, he has had a lot of at bats against Mark Burley and a lot of success 12 extra base hits and 13 RBIs. And a 329 batting average. Xander Bogarts, the rookie shortstop, has an eight game hit streak. That's the longest hit streak for the Red Sox this season. 321 with a homer and five RBIs. They're set to take on the red hot Mark Burley. Looks to become the first five game winner in the major leagues. Off to his best start of his 15 year career. That ERA you see right there, lowest in baseball. Dustin Pedroia, the second baseman. Takes the first pitch strike. We are underway. Pedroia hitting 269, and obviously the Red Sox are searching for a leadoff hitter. Their leadoff hitter for the last several seasons, Jacoby Ellsbury, is playing in New York. John Farrell's had to use six different leadoff batters already this season. Pedroia's always had a great on base percentage. That's why he's up there right now. Justin Pedroia is patient. He's selective. John Farrell knows that you don't have that same igniter at the top of the order with that great speed like Ellsbury. Upstairs. Red Sox lineup. They'll work you over. They'll make you throw strikes. And when you do throw strikes, they have that tendency of fouling off really good pitches. There's a strike and a good one. You saw Burley's career record. He's eight and nine for his career against the Red Sox. This is his 24th career start against Boston. Pedroia rips it into center field. Rasmus plays it on a hop. Dustin Pedroia with a leadoff single. Defensively, the Blue Jays have played great baseball. They've committed just seven airs in the outfield. It's Cabrera, Rasmus, and Bautista. On the infield, Lori and Reyes on the left side. Goins and Encarnacion on the right side. And the catcher is Deanna Navarro. In that left side, when Mark Burley's on the mound, is very important. Induced 13 ground ball outs, two double plays last time out against the Indians. All 11 balls hit on the ground were converted into outs. So you have to have a good left side when Mark's on the on the mound. Shane Victorino, Victorino, just back off the disabled list. He injured his hamstring right at the end of spring training. Missed the first 22 games of the season. On the ground, Reyes to second for one, back to first, double play. Well, everybody's scratching their head as to why Mark Burley is so much better this year. That's the reason. The improved defense, not only on the infield, but behind the plate and in left field. Has worked very well with the catcher, Deanna Navarro. And remember at the beginning of the year last year, no Reyes, no Lori on that left side. That's why we highlighted him there to start it. And Melky Cabrera wasn't running around like he is this year out in left field. The defense is a lot better. Defense has been terrific behind Burley, and he'll be the first to admit it. Two outs, David Ortiz. Ortiz showing bunt, and this is a question that I pose to the Boston Red Sox coaching staff today. When does it become counterproductive to try to bang your head against the wall and beat the shift? Situation like this with Napoli on deck. It begs for Ortiz to drop a bunt down. Napoli has worn out the Blue Jays in this ballpark. He's a power threat. He's got five home runs and 14 ribbies with two outs. Why not? And the, the argument it is. Why are you taking the bat out of Ortiz's hand? Long run, but because of that shift, it'll go into the it, first row of seats. If you're the Blue Jays, would you rather see David Ortiz bunting for a base hit or swinging for a home run? And I think that's your argument right there. There are the numbers right there. 49 homers against the Blue Jays. I'd rather have him bunting. Me too. <laughs> go ahead. Two outs. Hit hard, but there's that shift. Lori from shallow right field. Mark Burley, three up, three down. The double play helps him out.
lately, but they haven't been able to translate that into wins. They've had three straight games with multi home run innings. Top of the order is Jose Reyes, then Melky Cabrera. He's got a seven game hit streak, hitting 452, and he's hitting the ball hard. He's got a couple of doubles and a home run. And then Deanna Navarro, he's starting to heat it up as well. He's four for nine on this homestead, including his first home run of the season. The bats are starting to come alive a little bit here on this recent homestead. Going to need that against Jake Peavy, a fifth chance to try and win his first game of the season. Winless in his first four starts, just the second time in his career. He hasn't pitched poor. Look at that earned run average of just 3 3. Reyes takes a first pitch strike from Peavy. Reyes trying to get his timing down. Remember, he was on the disabled list with a hamstring issue. Pops this one into the seats. Blue Jays lineup starting to really come together now with Deanna Navarro coming around a little bit. The addition of Juan Francisco. Boris productive down in the bottom part of the order. Peavy with an 0-2 count. He spoiled a pretty good pitch. That's the old protect the plate approach. Yeah, emergency hack right there against Jake Peavy. You know, you were just talking about the offense and it seems to be rounding in the form just a little bit more. One aspect of the game that, that we haven't seen yet is the stolen base. And really the only guy who can run in the lineup is at the plate right now. And the hamstring problems, I think, have shut him down to try and Steel bases. That ball gets away from Piersinski. Reyes is thrown out at first. PB will get the strikeout. Well, let's take a look at the defense. And boy, has it been a problem. They've committed 19 errors already, including five last night against the Yankees. Johnny Gomes, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Shane Victorino. Will Middlebrooks is making his fifth start at third base. Xavier Bogarts is at Xander Bogarts is at shortstop and the Gold Glover Pedroia at second. Mike Napoli is the first baseman and A.J. Brzezinski signed as a free agent to catch for the You Red mentioned Sox. the 19 errors and that's why he's a welcome addition back into the lineup. Four gold gloves for Shane Victorino. One last year. Brings some energy to this ball club and he and Will Middlebrooks back into their lineup tonight. Yeah, it's the first time they've had their regular lineup on the field for a while. But 19 airs, that is unbelievable. Including five last night. That's the most airs they have committed since 2001 in a single game. You know, our good friend Brian Butterfield never likes to make excuses, but, but he was telling me, he said, it's been so cold in Boston, the field is, is almost frozen and the ball is skipping on him. And, and the, the fielders have not been able to get comfortable fielding balls at Fenway Park. Up and away. One and two. Well, here's a guy that's very comfortable, Melky Cabrera. He is off to a great start. 350 average, five homers and eight driven in. Pops this one up over near the Blue Jays dugout, and that is into the dugout, AJ Pierzynski. Got to the railing, but it was beyond his reach. There's another addition right there. You saw that shot of AJ Pierzyski. He comes over here, signs as a free agent. Blue Jays had some interest in AJ Pierzyski in the offseason, but at the late stages of his career, he's made a lot of money, obviously. And the last piece of puzzle you want as a free agent is an opportunity to win. He felt like he had that. With the Red Sox. Two balls and two strikes. The number two hitter, Melky Cabrera. Jose Bautista waits on deck. Well, there's another good changeup, and Cabrera strikes out. Two strikeouts in a row to start the game for Peavy. So Jose Bautista will step in. And Bautista is off to a great start. He's not getting much to hit, but he hasn't 
expanded his zone. Leads the majors with 27 walks. Goes after the first pitch and pops it out in front of home plate. Everybody looking at each other. Napoli comes down. Nobody really wanted to take charge, but the first baseman said, I'll get it. And Peavy has a one, two, three inning in his half of the first. The top of the second, and he's a power threat. He has five home runs already, and you can see where he likes the ball. Loves it up and out over the plate where he can extend those arms. He put on a home run power surge last year in this ballpark. A lot of the pitches that were out in front, I think the Blue Jays are going to have to keep it down, and I think they have to crowd Mike Napoli so he doesn't extend those balls. Mike Napoli was a Blue Jay for four days in January of 2011. Was acquired in the Vernon Wells trade and then shipped to Texas for Frank Francisco. Napoli certainly found a home with the Red Sox. He really fits in the Boston scheme of things. You know, and he showed him too. Remember, he signed a big free agent contract with him last year, and then some hip problems cut that down to one year, and he proved that he's a, a power force hitting behind David Ortiz. Last year for the Red Sox, he had 23 home runs and drove in at 92. 92 RBI is a career high for them, and certainly a big part of the reason they went to the World Series and won it. See, Burley is working him up in a way, not wanting to give him anything on the inner part of the plate. Everything's in the same spot. You just got to wonder if he's setting them up for a finish pitch. And we've seen that how many times already this year those fastballs on the inner half that lock up righties here it comes didn't get it in there he was trying to come inside and got away with a mistake and that's something that Deanna Tavares has picked up on some of these hitters working with Mark Burley you get the two strikes you go away 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 you can freeze them on the inner half now they're going away and Mrs. Napoli will draw the leadoff walk. Well, Mark Burley knows he's not a power hitter, hitter, so or power pitcher, so he has to make sure that he sets up the hitters to finish them off. The red zone is where he throws most of his pitches. Keep the ball away. He, he can get that change up down and away. But what we have noticed, he's starting to use the fastball on the outside part of the plate and the inner part of the plate. This is just a right-handed batter. For the most part, he'll keep the ball away. But he'll move it around and change speeds with that fastball. Johnny Gomes, he's nine for 28 against Burley. Gomes has the reputation of being a good hitter against lefty pitching, but the numbers don't bear that out. He takes care of the ball on the outside part of the plate and he hooks the ball. Fouls this one over the seats. 
all good hitters can carry, cover that outside part of the plate. That's where they're looking. It's where they're most vulnerable, so they try to cover that up, and then they just react to the ball on the inner half. Oh, and two. In the dirt, nice play by Navarro. Well, he shifted to his left and squared it up to keep Napoli at first for that double play possibility. And he was thinking about moving in the scoring position. Navarro picks that one. Last year, Johnny Gomes hit 182 against lefty pitching. That ball is hit into center field. Rasmus is there, and Gomes is retired. One down. So barely checking with the coverage at second. Who's got the bag on a comeback? Xander Bogarts, the shortstop. Though you're very always fine tuning the inner defense. Pitches downstairs. Bogarts is just 21 years old. He's from Aruba and played for the Netherlands in the World Baseball Classic, which is up and away. Compact swing, and he's got solid power. You watch him take batting practice, and the ball really has a lot of sound coming off that bat. He's got excellent plate coverage. Barely jammed him with that 85 mile an hour heater. Mark Burley leads the major leagues with his ERA at 0.64 coming in. Got a double play in the first. Boy, what a setup. Jams him with 85 and then throws him the changeup, and Bogarts is way out in front. That's why he has been so effective. That changeup has been good. He's been able to use the fastball. Nothing down the middle. Two balls, two strikes. Over Edwin in Carnacion's head. That's going to be extra bases. Napoli is headed to third. There's the throw to second. Reyes makes a nice play. Took a wicked hop. And he was able to glove it. Swipe tagged at Bogarts. And he had to make sure that he caught the ball to keep Napoli from scoring. Yeah, that, that saved the run right there by the Blue Jays. He's tied up again and jammed. And look where this ball goes over Edwin Encarnacion's head down the right field line. You couldn't throw it out there any better than that right there by Bogarts. It's going to be extra bases. That extends his hit streak to nine games. A.J. Pierzynski will bat against his former battery mate. Brzezinski and Burley, longtime teammates with the White Sox. He goes after the first pitch and lifts it to center. This will score a Napoli as the throw goes to third, and Brzezinski knocks in the first run of the ball game. Well, if anybody knows Mark Burley, it's got to be A.J. Brzezinski, how he's going to get him out, what the ball looks like. So he didn't wait around at all. Yeah. Cut a swing down and changed it up a little bit to get the ball up in the air. Well, that's all you got to do in that situation. You got a runner at third base, less than two outs, drive it to the outfield. So Boston has taken a one nothing lead. There are two outs now. Will Middlebrooks makes the first pitch strike. There are some gaudy numbers in this Red Sox lineup against. Mark Burley Middlebrooks is hitting 406 for 15 against Blue Jays left. He fouls that one off at the plate. It's 0 and 2. One of those players that you were talking about who has gaudy numbers, not so much batting average wise. He's not even in the lineup tonight. Pretty Sizemore's got four homers off of Mark Burley. 
Sizemore made the Red Sox team out of spring training after missing a couple of years. Took a shot at the outside corner and missed. One and two. There's a broken bat looper into right. Bautista charges and kicks off his glove. Bogarts scores. Bautista was going to be challenged to throw him out anyway. With two outs, Bogarts was off on contact. And the Red Sox have scored two against Mark Burley. Change up, down and away. Not a bad pitch. But right off the end of the bat. Will Middlebrook stays with that one, doesn't overcommit. Jose thinking he's got a chance at Bogarts and had to be fielded cleanly and got rid of and thrown accurately to get him. Middlebrooks picks up his second RBI of the season, Jackie Bradley Jr. This is the first time the Blue Jays have trailed with Mark Burley on the mound this year. Inside. Ball on the strike. Veteran hitters being patient. Brzezinski got the sack fly. Middlebrooks was patient, didn't overswing, and just kind of hit a little soft liner into right. Red Sox were number one last year in pitches per plate appearances. I mean, they've always had a great eye at the plate. They come into this game number two, just behind, a fraction behind the Minnesota Twins. And they're doing it again. Well, Mark Burley has been so good through his first four starts. He allowed a total of two earned runs in his first four starts, and he's given up two here in the second inning tonight. There's a ball driven to left field, and that's over the head of Melky Cabrera. Will Middlebrooks is going to be stopped at third. That ball carried a long way, hit on the line. And Jackie Bradley Jr. has the second double of the inning, his fifth of the season. That time it looked like he was trying to cut that ball away with two strikes. It's just a little bit too high. You can see Bradley doesn't have to reach for it. Powers it over the head of Cabrera, another extra base hit. You make him reach for that ball, and it's an easy fly ball to left field. Second and third, two outs back to the top of the order. Dustin Pedroia had a single to center his first time up. Early throws a strike. Cut it inside and just missed the inside edge. Burley with the leadoff walk this inning, just the sixth walk he has allowed all season. And sure enough, Mike Napoli came around to score. Pedroia, that's a base hit. That's going to split in the outfield. And two more runs come in. Pedroia's heading for second. Ryan Goins will tag him out. That ends the inning. Both runners score. It is a four run inning for Boston, and Blue Jays have fallen behind.
brought to you by the 2014 Honda CRV. Honda, proud to be the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. And by Home Hardware, homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Roof is closed at Rogers Center as the Red Sox have taken their 4 nothing lead. Cleanup hitter Edwin Encarnacion will start things off against Jake Peavy. Fastball upstairs at 91. Blue Jays haven't been able to avoid those crooked numbers lately. The opponents have been able to score multiple runs in innings, and that has been a real problem. PB ahead 0 and 2. Went right back upstairs, and he strikes out. Jake Peavy, former Cy Young Award winner for the Padres in 2007, and he's a savvy guy that knows how to mix his pitches effectively. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of everything from PB fastball, change, slider, curveball. And a cutter. He's a bulldog out there. He makes you swing the bat. He's he's smart. Came over to the Red Sox at a trade right at the trade deadline and pitched really well for him. Twelve and five last year. Excuse me, Buck. He won four of those games with the Red Sox. July 30th last season, a three-team trade that included seven players. Key player. TV coming to the Red Sox. Jose Iglesias went from Boston to Detroit, and Avisail Garcia went from Detroit to Chicago. Definitely one of those trades, I think, that helped every team. Everybody got what they were looking for. Detroit needed a shortstop, and the White Sox got a promising young outfielder. Unfortunately, he hurt his shoulder, and he's done for the season. How about both of them? Iglesias is out. Yep. For the Tigers. Navarro hits it high and deep into center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. was over in the alley in left center and he runs it down. Well, Jake Peavy, a little different script to tonight's game. Coming into this ball game, he had the lowest run support in baseball, averaging just 1.48 runs. Robbie Ross, R.A. Dickey, he's on the list as well. But tonight the Red Sox gave him four runs in the second and he's got to feel like he's got a monstrous lead. That's the total that they scored for him in his first four starts of the season. Four runs in 24 and a third inning for Jake Peter. They get that all in one inning. Juan Francisco. Peavy moving that running fastball in on the inside corner. Francisco facing Peavy for the first time. Hot shot past Napoli into right field. Francisco delivers with two outs. First base runner for the Jays. Trying to run that ball inside and it leaks out over the plate. Uh, Francisco is going to help this team. He can swing them out a little bit. See A.J. Pierzynski sneaking in behind him thinking that Francisco not a big wide turn. But you never know, and you've got no place else to go. Two outs, and a guy gets a base hit to right field. Why not trail him down there? Brett Laurie, two outs. Laurie's had a good start as far as the production goes five homers and 18 RBIs. It really doesn't. Match up with that 157 batting average. Hits this ball into right. Victorino backs up a few steps, and the inning is over. Blue Jays get a base runner, but leave him. Well, head to the third. PV and the Red Sox have a four run lead.
Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the 2014 Honda CRV. Honda, proud to be the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Friday night baseball at Rogers Center. The Boston Red Sox are in town for a weekend three game series. And they broke out against Mark Burley. Four runs on four hits in the second inning. Shane Victorino. Victorino had injury problems throughout the spring. He didn't have an awful lot of at bats. He had some core muscle problems, and then right at the end of spring training, he hurt his hamstring. It pushed him onto the DL. Last day of spring training, he hurts his hamstring. He had 28 at bats in spring training. So you got to wonder just how much rust he has on him. He was in the minor leagues rehabbing. A lot of the personnel for the Boston Red Sox are anxious for this game right here because they feel like this is the first game of the season that they've had their quote a team out on the field that they're going to feel. Victorino. Grounder to short Reyes quickly. Across the diamond. One down. Well, Mark Burley will talk about the pitch usage and how he mixes things up, and he never really gets himself in any patterns. No patterns. He's going to use all five of those pitches the fastball, change, curve, cutter, and the slider. And he'll work it around the, the strike zone. He'll move it in and out. You can put that cutter and slider, add them together, and throw it with the fastball. Also, you can see that he can really pitch off of that harder pitch. He gets ahead of David Ortiz, the DH. Blue Jays have always shifted against Ortiz. And barely misses inside. There you see Goins deep at second, and that's the third baseman, Brett Lurie, in shallow right in front of Bautista. Doesn't mean that he can't hit the ball the other way. He's just more prone, especially against a pitcher like Burley, to pull it. He hits this one high and deep and gone. David Ortiz. It's his fourth career home run against Mark Burley. That's his 50th career home run against the Blue Jays. And he has always hit well in this ballpark. Home run number five on the season. David Ortiz now has 436 career home runs. It's a cutter that's up. And that's something that Mark Burley also has done this year. Hasn't given up the long ball. It's his first. First home run that Burley has allowed this season. This is his fifth start. Well, he gets full extension. That ball stays out over the middle of the plate. And Ortiz with that rocking motion with the lower half. Got himself into a good spot to hit. Mike Napoli started the second inning with a leadoff walk. He came around to score on the sack fly of A.J. Pierzynski. The high pitch foul out of play. The Red Sox have a 5 nothing lead. Which doesn't bode well for the Blue Jays. Red Sox have always pitched very well against the Jays in this ballpark. There's a high fly ball to left. Long run for Rasmus and it's going to hit off the wall. Napoli will stop at second. With a long double off the wall in left center. His sixth double of the season. Looked like the only guy who had a chance at making that catch was Colby Rasmus in center field. You can see he's played Napoli straight up. And he goes after it, looking for Melky Cabrera. Think of that. Cabrera had a better shot at it. Well, the Red Sox are timing up early, early in this ballgame. They've hit three doubles in a home run. 
out of their seven hits. Just one out and we're in the top of the third. Johnny Gomes flying out to center field his first time up. There's a strike. Well, the Blue Jays at a time when they needed to have a starter go deep in the ball game now. And I'm not suggesting that Burley's close to coming out, but certainly he has been hit. Hard for the first time this year. Yeah. He's been averaging seven innings every time he goes to the mound this season. This doesn't. Right now, as of right now, it doesn't have a feel for those pitches. Not being able to throw it where he wants to. Hasn't been able to execute the pitches in the same fashion we have seen in his first four starts. Got a double play after a leadoff single in the first inning. Got out of that inning. Three up, three down. Strike two to Johnny Gomes. We saw this the other night when Chris Tillman was here in the Baltimore Orioles. He got rocked early, settled down, and actually pitched long enough to win that game because he gave their offense a chance to come back. Tillman gave up seven earned runs and picked up the win. Johnny Holmes takes it outside. So Burley issues his second walk of the night. <laughs> Pete Walker is making a slow walk out to the mound. Blue Jays stirring in the bullpen. Nobody has really gotten the glove to throw now. It looks like it might be Neil Wagner. Wagner has grabbed his glove and he'll start to loosen up. Wagner pitched a third of an inning last night. And that was it. He gave up a one out double and then walked. The one out double and then came out of the game after a line drive. So the matter is Xander Bogarts, the shortstop. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Bogarts had a good at bat his first time up. He flared a little loop double over the first baseman's glove. He's behind 0 2. Those are the kind of hits that get you going in a game like this. Just throw one out in the right field and get yourself a double. He's got some bat speed when you watch him swing. He was the number one prospect in all of baseball in the International League and the Eastern League. It's this ball hard race at short second double play. Mark Burley gets out of the inning. But another double play. The Blue Jays have some work to do. Colby Erasmus will start things off for the Jays. Then Ryan Goins. And back to the top of the order, Jose Reyes.
Wilner, host of Blue Jays Talk, delivers insight and debate. Blue Jays Talk after the game on Sportsnet 590. The fan. So Blue Jays trail by five. They've got some work to do. We mentioned the Red Sox pitching well against the Blue Jays in this ballpark. And Peavy's off to a good start. One hit, he has three strikeouts in the first two innings and gets ahead of Rasmus. He can afford to be a little bit more aggressive with his fastball. That off speed pitch looked like a change up in the first inning was real good for him. Peavy is as competitive a pitcher as you will see. After he threw that last pitch, it got away from him and he hollers at himself. I think that's why he fits right in with this team. This is a bunch that come to the ballpark ready to play every day. There's that changeup, and that has been a good pitch for him. So now the Red Sox are shifting up their shift. Bogarts returns to short. Middlebrooks goes over to second, and Pedroia is out in right field. Another changeup. They leave the third baseman over on the left side of the infield until they get the two strikes. Then the bunt possibility is eliminated. So now they put the shortstop back in his natural position. Done their homework. They've seen that. Rasmus has tried to drop a bunt down a couple of times this year. Well, you don't think Brian Butterfield would miss anything, do you? Nope. Tori Lavello is the bench coach. He, of course, was with the Blue Jays as their first base coach. Went to Boston with John Farrell. Bon Nieves is the pitching coach. This is his first opportunity as the pitching coach, his second year with Boston. Yeah, they do their homework. There's Butter. He studies it. He was out here today about 3 o'clock sitting on the bench. Said he just wanted to come out and watch the Blue Jays take batting practice. Rasmus hits a high pop up. Bierzynski doesn't see it. Bogarts comes from shortstop and makes the catch in foul territory. The 2014 Honda CRV. Honda, proud to be the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. That was the new aquarium right next to Rogers Center, next to the CN Tower. It's been a very popular destination with tourists coming to this area. Ryan Goins takes a strike. Jake Peavy, one of those. Veteran pitchers that will pitch to the scoreboard. Understand he's got a big lead early here. It's going to be aggressive. No need to show him too much till you have to. With that big lead like that, use your fastball, use your changeup. Save your strikeout slider for later in the game when you need it. Well, and two. AL East team against AL East team, you might make four or five starts against the team in a given season. So if you put all your cards on the table in the first start, what are you going to use to surprise the hitters later on in the season? That's a great point when you need it. You might be in Fenway Park this summer with a couple of runners on and you want to save a run. Brian Goins fouls it back. Goins is swinging the bat much better lately. He hit his first home run of the season here on Wednesday night. Game against Chris Tillman. Two balls, two strikes. Boy, he stayed tough on that nasty changeup. Was able to get a piece of it that stays alive. Evan Sites are looking for a few more line drives. Instead of fly balls, balls are not going to get out. Be better off hitting some more line drives the other way.
inside. Full count. Reyes is on deck. One out. We're in the bottom of the third. Reyes struck out his first time up. The ball hit the left, but Johnny Gomes gets back and makes the catch. Two down. Much better approach that time by Gomes. Hit that ball hard on the line. So Peavy, first time through the lineup, has three strikeouts and one hit. Slider down and in. Well, something that might work to the Blue Jays' advantage, Jake Peavy had his lowest ground ball percentage last year. And every out so far today has been in the air or a strikeout. That could bode well for the Blue Jays, who are a home run hitting, fence busting type of team. They just have to figure out what Peavy's, how he's attacking them. Blue Jays hit eight home runs in the Orioles series. <laughs> you can hear Peavy upset when he doesn't make his pitch. Mentioned he won a Cy Young Award in the National League for the Padres. Missed with that one, really ran off the plate. This is his 13th Major League season. He's a three time All Star and won that Cy Young in 2007. Went 19 and 6. Ray has got a piece of it. Felt like he had a good pitch to hit. Boy, he certainly did. 3 1 heater. Check that 2 1 heater right there. Had a chance to manage Jake Peavy in the 2006 World Baseball Classic. He's a manager's dream. Gamer, isn't he? Reyes hits the ball in the air. Middlebrooks in foul ground gets there and the Blue Jays go quietly in their half of the third. Jake Peavy and the Red Sox have a 5 nothing lead. Saturdays are presented by Boston Pizza. Tomorrow, Saturday, April 26, Blue Jays will take on the Red Sox in the middle game of this three game series. Game time is 107 p.m. Special kids price tickets in the 200 and 500 level outfield seats. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. Call the Blue Jays at 416 341 1234 or log on to bluejays.com. AJ Pierzynski had an RBI, had a sack. Fly in the second. Inning. 
You know when you hit against your former team, you always get caught in the trap of does he know what I'm thinking? And you might think yourself into a bad event. You probably had that opportunity when you went back to face the Cleveland Indians and said, oh man, they know me inside and out. Did you ever get in a jam where you're thinking, I'm thinking too much here? You know, the first game that I played against my former team, I faced the guy I was traded for, but Black. So I knew people would tell him how he would pitch to me. Didn't work. <laughs> Did you get him? Took him deep. <laughs> so but, much for that trade, huh? But you're right. You know, you think you have to outsmart him because you're going over there and they know you and you know them. Brzezinski lines it in the right. Bautista makes a nice sliding catch. First out of the top half of the fourth. Jose Bautista has played a very good right field this year. Running better. He's throwing better. He got a great jump on this ball. Hanging breaking ball hit hard. And you can see he took a great route to it. And makes the out. The Blue Jays have not committed an error in a home game since opening night against the Yankees. They have really tightened up the defense. That error, the only error committed at home, was by Dustin McGowan in the fifth inning of opening night. There's a line or two left, and that ball was knuckling. That ball was hit hard by Will Middlebrooks, and Melky Cabrera broke to his left and then came back to his right, and that ball came back. To his left. Yeah, coming into this game, 76 consecutive innings. As you see, Melky, stay with that one and watch it right into your glove. Knuckling is exactly what you said it is. The ball acts like a knuckleball. There's another ball hit hard, and nobody's going to catch this one. Jackie Bradley Jr. is around first. He's turning around second, headed for third. Brian Goins with the relay. Brett Laurie was off the bag. For some reason, he was inside third base, and Goins made a strong throw. I don't know that Lori expected Goins to make the relay or not. Ball splits the outfield, slider up in the strike zone, and watch how it hits the wall and just stays there. Doesn't bounce back to Rasmus. He's got to go and get it. Here's the relay. You're right. Uh, why Brett Lori was not on the bag, I don't know. Two outs. It looked like he was trying to tell Goins to just go ahead and hold the ball. He's got his hands up. Goins threw it where he was supposed to. That's the Madroya. Ball on the strike. Pedroia is two for two. He drove in two runs in the second. Popped up. Bowen's out. Bautista in. The right fielder calls for it. And Burley gets out of the top of the fourth. Red Sox leave her on. Melky Cabrera will start things off. He's fourth in the American League in hitting. Then Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion.
Bradley coming to third. You can see Lori throws up his hands and then has to hustle to get over by the base. Lori Rivera met him when he came back in the dugout, and they're talking about positioning on taking that throw at third base. But a third baseman, you'd think, would stay on the outside of the base path. So the relay man would have a clear view of you. And you wouldn't have the possibility of that ball hitting the baseball. Yeah, if you're on the inside part right there. Bottom of the fourth inning, it's two, three, four for the Blue Jays. Melky Cabrera hits it into center field. That's going to be caught by Jackie Bradley Jr. Good speed. Well, we saw him run down the Donna, Deanna Navarro drive in the second, and he got a good break on that. Well, he is known as a defense first player. Looked like he broke back initially, thinking that, that ball was going to be hit a little bit harder than Melky Cabrera. Took a big swing, hit it off the end of the bat, but his speed just got him to the baseball. One down for Jose Bautista. He popped out to the first baseman to end the first. Driven into right center. Victorino's not going to get it. It hits at the base of the wall in right. Bautista is thinking about three. He'll shut her down. The Blue Jays trail by five. And Bautista is in scoring position with a one out double. Boy, he has really made the adjustment to counteract this shift. Watch how the hands go for it first. And the bat barrel lags just a little bit. You do that when you try and hit the ball to right field. And Jose powers that ball right over Victorino's head. And you're right, he's thinking about three, but you're down by five. No sense trying to chance that. Plenty of time for the Blue Jays to get back in it. Bautista's third double of the season. Edwin Encarnacion struck out his first time up. Straight back over our heads. Edwin is hitting 230. But he has one homer and nine RBIs. Way outside. Edwin got off to a slow start last April, but finished up with nine homers and 20 ribbies in the month of April. Yeah, it was the last month of April where, where he really caught fire. Started pounding the ball out of the ballpark. Peavy's challenging him with fastballs, which is surprising. Struck him out the first time with three heaters. Edwin's going to time one of these up. Pitched him upstairs with the fastball in that first at bat. And there he threw him the off speed pitch, and Jeff Kellogg down at first, and he went around. Edwin tried to check the PV changeup, but he went too far. Well, the Blue Jays just got to hang tough and hope that they can string together some hits against Jake Peavy and get back in this game. Mark Burley stranded a base runner last time out, shut up the Red Sox in the top of the fourth. Pedroia. Jockeying in behind Bautista and Peavy spun around but made no throw. That's one advantage of that shift. You can put a guy right behind that runner at second base and keep him a little bit closer to the bag. And 
just inside. It's a full count. John Navarro is on deck. He hit one of the eight Blue Jay home runs in the Orioles series. Bautista with a one out double. He's got a lot of confidence in that changeup right now. He's not afraid to throw it to the right hander. A right handed power hitter. And he's tossing that changeup in there. He might go back upstairs. You can see they're using that outside sign to go along with the traditional sign. Garnachon takes a walk. First and second for Deanna Navarro. Well, if he can do this, what he did last night, change up out over the plate, and he crushes it to right field. Blue Jay's going to be right back into this one. This is his first home run as a Blue Jay. And he's got some power from about the 375 mark in right center field to the line. Navarro had a career high 13 home runs last year for the Cubs. You mentioned the fact that PB was giving up a lot of fly ball contact. Not one ground ball yet tonight. We're in the fourth inning. Peavy running into trouble after retiring the first batter this inning. Bautista hit the double to right center and then Encarnacion walked. The Blue Jays have a quick strike offense. No question about that. They had some crooked number innings in the Orioles series. They scored six runs in the second against Chris Tillman. There goes Bautista, and they pitches a strike, and Bautista is out. Oh, my. That's a huge out when you've got Peavy on the ropes. Been dancing off there. You can see the shortstop is right behind there, so not a huge jump. They had a huge lead by Jose. And you're right, down by five, you got to be a thousand percent sure that you can make it to third base. Big second out. Now it's three and one to Navarro. And what's worse about that, he gets thrown out, and Edwin didn't read that. Jose did that on his own and Edwin couldn't move up. He just had to stay there at first base. Peavy with a 3 1 count to Navarro. Foul back now, it's full. Juan Francisco singled his first time up. Middlebrook's got that tag down very quickly, but it was bang bang at third. But like you said, you've got to be a thousand percent sure you can make it when you're down by five. Uh, nothing worse than walking off the field like that after you've been called out at third base. Peavy and Pierzynski taking too much time, and Navarro steps out of the box. Jake Peavy spent five seasons with the Chicago White Sox and overcame some serious injuries while he was in Chicago. There goes Encarnacion. The ball is fouled into the seats. Yeah, his career was thought to be over because of those injuries. Tore a pectoral muscle in his right chest and. It's a very unusual injury, and 
at the time they weren't really sure whether or not he'd be able to bounce back but he certainly has. He had a great year last year 12 and 5 combined record with the White Sox and the Red Sox. Another foul out of play. Pitched in the playoffs. And the World Series. His first game in the playoffs last year was good, but after that, not real good. ALCS, he started game four against the Tigers in the World Series. He started game three against the Cardinals. Both starts were on the road. Another three two pitch, and PB steps off the rubber. Blue Jays were starting to make some noise, and then Bautista got thrown out at third. There goes Encarnacion, and the ball is fouled up the first baseline. Peavy's going to let it roll just in case it hits something. Yeah, very smart. Very smart as Edwin has to head back to first base. He's getting the sprints in here early in this game. That was a heads up play by Peavy. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. He won the Gold Glove in 2012. He and Jeremy Hellickson of the Tampa Bay Rays both awarded a Gold Glove. He's been a three-time All-Star, Cy Young Award winner. He's had quite a career. I've seen balls like that kick back and end up being fair. So he let it go, hoping that would happen. Fly ball, left field, and. Johnny Gomes with a long run held by Bogarts the shortstop. Running away from the infield, he makes the catch to end the inning. We've played four. It's time now for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zorn. Over 100 of the world's best magazines on your tablet. Baseball fans sign up at nextissue.ca slash baseball and get an extended 60 day free trial. The crowd on hand here tonight at Rogers Center. Red Sox are in town. The world champion Boston Red Sox. Tomorrow there will be a private ceremony to give Jonathan Diaz his World Series ring. He has played a total of seven days last year with the Boston Red Sox and they decided to give him a World Series ring. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, how great is that? John Farrell will present it to him. Mike Hazen is also here, one of the assistant general managers for the Boston Red Sox to present Jonathan. Shane Victorino aligns it to left. Melky Cabrera gets there. Warren Alves check in with Jamie Kimball. Mm -hmm. 
There's John Farrell and Jonathan Diaz. Diaz got his first major league start against the Toronto Blue Jays last year at Fenway Park. And John Farrell, of course, knew of Diaz from his time with the Blue Jays. And they got him for a year, spent most of the time in Triple A Pawtucket. Ortiz hits it. That's a fair ball. Burley will get to the bag quickly, and David Ortiz has retired. Two quick outs. That's more like it right there for Mark Burley. Work quickly, pound that strike zone, make good pitches down. If you do that, all good hitting teams are going to make out. Mike Napoli will step in. Napoli has been on base twice. He walked and scored, and he was stranded after he hit a double in the third. Mike Napoli set a goal this offseason for himself to improve as a two strike hitter. He's improved as a hitter in general. His second hit of the night, he rips it into left field. So he's been on base three times against Mark Burley. Last year, Napoli hit 193 with two strikes. This year, so far, 279. Dramatic improvement. Yeah, this team's always been a good team. Hitting with two strikes. This time the ball right out in front. He had thoughts of maybe going to second base on that. But Melky gets over, cuts it off nicely. Johnny Gomes takes a high breaking ball. Little tapper toward third. Brett Lori. High throw and no tag. Lori rushed his throw. Johnny Gomes hustling down the line. Incarnacion took a swipe at Gomes as he went past. But it appeared as though he didn't make any contact. Tapped out in front of the plate, and Gomes is thinking base hit all the way. Lori's got to come a long way. He was playing deep. And from that side, you can see Gomes say he didn't tag me, Brett, with that play. Yeah, and you can see that not even close. He tries to sell it to the first base umpire. Jeff Kellogg is the first base umpire, and he's getting a visit from John Gibbons, and he got the wave off on the possibility of a replay, so he'll jog back to the dugout. But the replay will show that. And kind of show never made contact with Gomes as he had to come off the bag to catch the throw. So it's an infield hit for Johnny Gomes, back to back two out hits. Tender Bogart's the shortstop. Burley has now thrown 85 pitches. He is. Really been able to settle in after giving up four in a second and a run in the third. And these are big runs, obviously, to leave on base. The pitch tracker is brought to you by Acer, official partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. Two down, we're in the top of the fifth. Austin has five runs on 10 hits. Home run. They've had a triple, double, an infield hit, a regular hit. There's a fly ball to center. This should end the inning. Rasmus is camped under it and makes the catch. Austin strands a pair. Mark Burley leaves him, and the Blue Jays are still within striding, striking distance.
would think that that would be the subject of Bautista getting thrown out at third. We heard from Buck Showalter your best teaching moments occurred during the course of the ball game. The Jays are down by five, and they were down by five when Bautista broke for third, and Pierzynski threw him out. And all good players will listen to that and learn from that. So if it happens again, you can you can learn from it. Not a bad play. It's only a bad play when you don't make it. So Juan Francisco will start things off against Jake Peavy. Peavy has allowed just two hits. Francisco has one of those hits. Walker having a conversation. Two and zero. Oh. Beebe was a little shaky in the fourth after the fly out of Cabrera. Then Bautista hit a double and Connorson walked, and then that's when Beebe got helped out by the caught stealing at third. He drops that breaking ball in there for a strike. It's two and two. Jake Peavy looking for his first decision of the season. Yeah, that's hard to believe. But, but you look at the run score, they, they've only scored him four runs before tonight in his four starts. He's got a good earned run average. Comes back and strikes out Francisco. Four strikeouts <laughs> for Peavy. The 2014 Honda CRV. Honda, proud to be the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Brett Laurie batting with one out goes after the first pitch, and Peavy takes an easy play of it. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Giordano Ventura, the young right hander, is starting against Jimenez. Kansas City is starting to play a little better. They have gotten some real good starts of late. Bruce Chen, James Shields, Jeremy Guthrie all throwing the ball very well. Yeah, they're starting to hit the ball just a little bit better. They're still right around 500. But that's another division, the American League Central. All five teams separated by just two games. Blue Jays will play the Royals starting Tuesday night from Kansas City. Ball on a strike to the Blue Jays center fielder, Colby Erasmus. Been a good pitch for him all night. That changeup has really had a lot of late life on it. Good movement. Complements his fastball really well. Can't sit on either one of those. Hit hard. Pedroya in shallow right goes to first, and Peavy sets the Blue Jays down in order. In the fifth, we'll go to the sixth. Boston with a 5 nothing lead.
Foundation. Sunday, April 27th, Blue Jays will finish up this Red Sox series. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. Help break barriers to organize sports. Drop off your gently used baseball equipment at Rogers Center. Donations will be accepted at gates 3, 5, 10, and 13. Log on to BlueJays.com slash Rookie League for more information. Catch your A.J. Pierzynski and start things for Boston here in the sixth. And he's got another base hit. He just reached out and poked it into center field. He's got a base hit, a sacrifice fly, and he's lined out to right. He's hit the ball well against Burley. Well, like we said before, he knows Burley better than anybody on this field right here. Cutter stays right with that. Look where his head is, right down on that baseball. Third baseman Will Middlebrooks. Inside off the plate. Found it straight back to the screen. Burley's ahead one and two. Reaches for that off speed pitch. Mark Burley coming into this game got up to a fantastic start. He won his first four games, had an ERA of 0.64. And we talked to him about that. He said, you know what? You make 33 starts a season. You're going to have 11 good ones, 11 bad ones, and 11 you have no idea what's going to happen. This ball is hit into the alley in right center, and it's going to go all the way to the wall. Pierzynski is headed toward third. He's being waved home. Ryan Goins from deep right field makes a strong throw. Pierzynski scores, and Middlebrooks is thrown out at third. Goins has made a couple of real strong throws from the relay position. It was too late at home, but they're able to get the first out of the inning as Middlebrooks is thrown out. But the sixth run comes in. A couple of base running mistakes right now by the Red Sox. That ball is driven out there by Middlebrooks. His first came back since coming off the disabled list. And you're right, Goins makes a strong throw, and for some reason, Middlebrooks tries to go all the way to third base, but he's an easy out. Watch the strong throw by Ryan Goins as Colby gets it to him accurately, and he had courts a strike. One hop right to the catcher. It's not in time to get the, the runner at the plate. He was going to score. Goins, a shortstop with that shortstop arm strength, has made a couple of good relays tonight. Two balls and two strikes to the Red Sox center fielder. Jackie Bradley Jr. has a double and a triple. Full count. Full count, one out. Mark Burley has now thrown 100 pitches. And he walks Brantley. Well, Blue Jays got off to a pretty good start to their season. They went 8 and 6 in the first 14 games. Their starters ERA was good. The bullpen was breezing along. Opponents were hitting just 247, but the last eight games it's been a totally different story. And pitching, starters ERA is up to five. You can see with the bullpen's ERA. They're still catching it. And this is the first time that we have seen Mark Burley this season leave when he is being down. 
Neil Wagner will come into the game to face the top of the order. That's to Petroya when we come back. Blue Jays are down by six. Burley has his first disappointing start of the season. He gives up 12 hits in five and a third. Six runs in so far. Runner at first base is his responsibility. Jackie Bradley Jr. and Neil Wagner makes his ninth appearance of the season. Wagner pitched in last night's game, just faced two batters, a third of an inning, and a hit, so he's fresh. Trying to get through the sixth inning. He might. Give him the seventh inning also. Dustin Pedroia. Two for three so far. He drove in a pair in the second inning with a single to left. Late on that high fastball, and he fouls it out of play. Pedroia hit 300 last year for the Red Sox. And the only number that was really kind of unusual was the fact he only hit nine home runs. He drove in 84 runs, which was just seven off his career high. But he did it all with a torn thumb ligament the whole season. Heard it the first couple of days of the season last year and played the whole year with that thumb injury. Had surgery in the offseason to repair it, and every once in a while he still has some lingering effects from the surgery, but he's happy to be 100% again. And the biggest downturn from that was his power because of the thumb. He wasn't able to really roll that left hand through the entire swing, he kind of cut it off because it was his left thumb. And but he hung in there and said I couldn't miss eight weeks of the regular season so he played with. It. And he loves that high fastball too. You think you can get one up there to him and he just has that ability to. Keep the bat head high and through the strike zone. Yeah if you look at him and he's what five seven you think, oh, I can power fastballs right by him. Don't get fooled. Hit 21 home runs in 2011. Bouncing ball. Reyes will flip to second, and Goins came off the bank. Ryan Goins got turned around, and Reyes had a little bit of a problem getting that ball out of his glove. I think he was thinking about flipping it with his glove, and he yeah. had to flip it. And it was behind Goins that pulled him off the back. And I think uh, trying to turn a double play is not really a ball that you're going to turn the double play on because you got to take two or three steps to go ahead and try and 
flip the ball to go and you can see it looked like he wanted to right there Ryan should have just tried to bear him that ball just keep that foot in the, on the on the base on the base and get one out for sure up the middle you're not going to turn two on that one. first and second one out Shane Victorino chases the first pitch Lori the third baseman the infield fly rules in a fight Victorino is retired two down let's check in with Jamie Campbell <laughs> Well, Albert Pujols is back, and everybody was talking about the lack of power and the lack of production, and he has quieted the critics. Hiroki Kuroda has had a rough night in Yankee Stadium. Four in the third, ten hits, six runs. Two home runs in Stewart and Pujols. Albert never had his legs underneath him last year. Had the plantar fasciitis ended up going on the DL, missing the rest of the season. He just, you don't have your legs hitting, you're not going to hit. Neil Wagner in relief of Mark Burley. David Ortiz homered against Burley in the third. It was his 50th career home run against the Blue Jays at his third all time. Alex Rodriguez has 56. And Ortiz's former teammate Manny Ramirez has 54. Two and one. Runners at first and second. Ninety six, but off the plate outside. A strike. Full count. David Ortiz hit that home run off Burley. Left handed hitter hitting a home run off left handed pitching. Among active hitters, David Ortiz is third in home runs against lefty pitching. He's got 98. Jason Giambi has 108, and Adam Dunn has 117. There go the runners, and Ortiz stays alive. And to think that the Minnesota Twins gave up on David Ortiz. He had 20 home runs for him the last season he played for him, and then they didn't offer him a contract. He's come over to Boston, he's a hero. Terry Ryan is the man that made that decision. He said it's the worst decision of his professional career. Becky Bradley Jr. broke early and obviously with the shift on he just goes to third base and Wagner did a pretty good thing of not balking right there. He just calmly stepped off the rubber. Now watch this. They're shifting over There's third base wide open. So he just steps off the runner and gives him the bag. Pedroia at first he'll be off on the pitch. It's ball four. That'll load the bases. Well, the Blue Jays bullpen, which was thought to be a real strength, has run into a rough patch of late. Veteran hitters in this Red Sox lineup have been patient, and they have racked up six runs on 12 hits, and now they have taken four walks. The dangerous Mike Napoli has been on base three times, a walk. A double and a single. This is the type of offense that the Red Sox used last year. Took the walk when they give it to you. They were first in the American League in on base percentage at 349 last year. Coming into this game, 11. Well, as you mentioned, they haven't had their complete lineup intact. No Victorino, no Middlebrooks. They're in there tonight. There's a high strike. It's a ball and a strike. Uh, 
That play with a big rip fouls it back. Upstairs, it's two and two. Bases are loaded. There are two outs. Wagner in relief of Mark Burley. Outside, a full count. Jackie Bradley Jr. is at third base. Dustin Pedroia reached on a fielder's choice, and David Ortiz walked with two outs. The runners will be off on the pitch. Johnny Gomes on deck. There go the runners, and that play spoils the pitch. Breaking ball. Tell you that that's what they do. Napoli recognized that and was able to get the bat head out and check his swing and foul it off. We mentioned that Napoli had set a goal of being a better two strike hitter. That's a good start right there. More inexperienced hitters would have wailed away at that one and swung and missed. Fouls it off. Chokes up a bit on the bat. Better bat control, but he said, I'm not going to lose my aggressiveness. I'm just going to try to strike out fewer times, put the ball in play. You know, for a slugger, a guy who hits home runs, he has a good eye at the plate. They choke it up on the bat handle. Another foul back. Wagner and Navarro trying to figure out how to end this inning. And they'll walk Napoli and force it around. Jackie Bradley Jr. scores for a second time. Boston has a 7 0 lead. Napoli picks up his first RBI. And that will close the book on Mark Burley. Johnny Gomes, you can bet he's going to be sitting all over this first fastball he sees. And that's why they throw him a breaking ball. He's up there in an RBI situation. He's hacking. He's got four grand slams in his career. A breaking ball. This one outside. Wagner has come in. To this ball game, and he's thrown 25 pitches yeah. this inning. Hoping to get, you know, an inning and two thirds out of him, possibly for tonight. It looks like they're just trying to get two thirds out of him. Three walks now, and that's been a problem from the bullpen for about the last week or so, coming in and walking people. Gomes strikes out. The Red Sox lead. The bases loaded, but they score two more. Boston has a seven nothing lead. And fans, here comes the home hardware cleanup crew. Brought to you by Natura. Home hardware slate. Exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products.
fans enjoying a seat upgrade courtesy of TD. While over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse are folks from Boost. Welcome to Rogers Center. And hope you're having a good Friday night. Boston Red Sox are leading seven to nothing, and they've wrapped out 12 hits. So the number nine hitter Ryan Goins will step in against Jake Peavy. Peavy has held the Blue Jays to just two hits. They won Francisco single in the second and a Bautista one out double in the fourth. You know, I don't ever remember Jake Peavy's fastball moving that much. He used to throw harder when he was younger. But I don't remember this type of movement that we're seeing. Peavy makes another fine play. Hot shot back to the mound. Goins is retired. And all of a sudden, Peavy's got the ball on the ground. Yeah. Three straight ground ball outs. Using that two seamer with that good movement to get it off that hitting plane. Putting the ball down now. A couple of comebackers. And a ground out to second. Back to the top of the order. Well, there's that pitch you were talking about. That running two seamer. It looks like it's going to be inside if you're hitting if you're Jose Reyes and it just clips that inside corner. And then he comes with that slider in the same area. So PV is creating X's on the inside part of the plate. The fastball running back to the plate, the slider running off the plate. What that does is it certainly keeps the hitter from diving out over the outside corner trying to go the other way. All three of those pitches are inside. Then he uses the changeup. Ball is drilled, and Victorino is going to play it off the wall. Reyes is round first. He's headed to second. Jose Reyes with his second double of the season. He showed him that change up with two strikes and it was low and then went right back to it. Look at the split grip type of feel on that pitch and it stayed out up over the plate. And Jose stayed back on that one and he's got some power. Bat speed creates that power and he's got an extra base hit. So Reyes is second with one out. Melky Cabrera. He's been held hitless tonight. Or Peavy has had that pitch all night long. That fastball on the inside corner to lefties. Back over the Blue Jays dugout. Melky Cabrera came into this game with a 350 batting average. And going back to last year, the batting average improvement is the second highest in the American League. He's improved his batting average from 2013 to this year by 71 points at the start of play tonight. Totally different player than what we saw last year. Reunited with Kevin Seitzer, where he had his best season with the Kansas City Royals when they were together there. Oh, and two. Breaking ball, and he 
covers the outside edge. Diane Viciedo of the White Sox has the biggest improvement in batting average from last year to this. He's improved his batting average 112 points. Getting some playing time with Chicago now that that Garcia is out. And he's saying, I'm not giving it back. Blue Jays are down by seven. Reyes is double, just the third hit off Jake Peavy. Milky that time ducking out of the way of that two seamer. Pulled foul down the right field line. Milky. Has failed to get a hit in just one game this year. Start out the season with a 14 game hit streak. He is trying to extend his current hit streak to eight. And he will. Face hit through the right side, and Reyes is being stopped. Victorino. Has a great arm. Reyes stops at third. Cabrera extends his hit streak to nine straight games. Looked like it was another off-speed changeup. Just grounds it into right field again. Down by five runs. Louis Rivera is not going to take any chances with the runners. Not with your three and four hitter coming up. Split. You can see the side rotation. And Elke stays right with it. Boy, his head stayed on that pitch. Reyes goes to third. Bautista doubled his last time up. Bautista's reaction suggests that ball was off the plate outside, and he's really controlled his. Yep. Emotions regarding the strike zone. Done a great job of that. He's been right too. That first pitch was off the strike zone. Bautista leads the majors with 27 walks. He's been very patient and very selective. And he knows the strike zone. Show something inside to Jose Bautista. A couple of pitches away. That's just a show me pitch right there. He shook to that inside fastball. Piersinski wanted a couple of other pitches away, and he shook to that ball. And he's got to got to move his feet when it's over two. Down and away. Well, you use a phrase we hear a lot. And hitting coaches and pitching coaches talk about a hitter moving their feet. What kind of an impact does that have on an at bat? Lose your toe hole uh, up there at, at the bat. A lot of times you'll find a nice little toe hole in there, dig a nice hole, and you feel comfortable at the plate. You start moving your feet, and it's almost like you're starting your at bat all over. And Full count. Jose. He missed that breaking ball. PV missed with it outside. Now it's a full count. Reyes at third. Cabrera at first. Blue Jays are down by seven trying to rally back in Palacion on deck. Oh, 
Bautista called out the inside breaking ball. Boy, that one backed up on Jake Peavy. And it really fooled Jose Bautista. Jose is getting the timing. Stays back. It backs up on the inner half. No argument. It was high enough and it got plenty of the play, but you can see the timing from Bautista backed up on him and fooled him. Edwin Encarnacion now with two outs. Blue Jays with just four base hits against Peavy. He's working on a shutout here in the bottom of the sixth. Pop back out of play. 0 oh and 2. Reyes doubled with one out. He's now at third. He went to third on Melky Cabrera's single to run. Jake Peavy throws a lot of pitches very similar to David Cohn. Same type of arm angle, same type of squeaking breaking ball. And he has the same competitive makeup. That's exactly what I was going to say. He's competitive. He never gives in to that hitter. Always thinking out there. And right now he's thinking, okay, what is that one pitch that I need right here to Edwin? Do I try to go upstairs? That's how they struck him out in the second. Little cutter and Edwin strikes out of PV. Strikes out Bautista and Incarnacion to end the sixth. Mark Burley with his first rough outing of the season and came at the hands of the Boston Red Sox with all their veteran hitters in the lineup. Xander Bogarts goes after the first pitch and it's at a mile high in foul ground. Lori 
has room and almost overran it. But he's able to make the catch. That's the first out at the top of the seven. Boy, when you say a mile high, you aren't exaggerating. That ball way up there now. It's got that spin. It's going to come back, and Brett realizes that and catches the ball, get the first down. That ball was way up there. AJ Pierzynski officially one for two tonight at a sack fly in the second and our base hit and scored in the sixth. Two and zero to the Red Sox catcher. Boy, he had a rip at that high fastball. They set you up. Take a couple of pitches that are off the plate. Think you can lay one in there. Swing them from their heels. Three and one. Now a full count. Now this is the first of three. The pitching matchup for tomorrow afternoon will be Clay Buckles for the Red Sox against Brandon Morrow. And then John Lester and R.A. Dickey on Sunday. Kuzinski hits it into right. Bautista will play it on a hop. Kuzinski has his second consecutive hit. So Mark Burley goes five and a third, gives up 12 hits, six earned runs. There was a scoring change earlier in the game that caused one of those runs to be. Unearned free walks, no strikeouts through 101 pitches. The air was charged to Reyes on the fielder's choice that allowed Jackie Bradley to get to second base. So that's the first air by a Blue Jays position player all season here at home. Just the eighth air of the year. Yeah, you got to go all the way back to the first game here, the fifth inning. Todd Redmond threw a ball down the right field line. That was the only other error that the Blue Jays had committed here. Speaking of Todd Redmond, there he is starting to get loose. Well, Middlebrooks has driven in a pair, making just his fifth start of the season. At third base, he's fresh off the disabled list. Checked his swing on that high pitch. The Red Sox with this veteran lineup. Have been patient. They've been selective. This is a little bit more the way they hit last year. They have worked the Blue Jays for five walks. They haven't had the full complement of players really all season, and I'm counting spring training also. It's been that ball hits them. Stop and start. Stop and go. Four in spring training with the injuries, and now they finally have their eight team out there. Uh, Middlebrooks is aboard. He is hit by a pitch. This fastball runs inside, and he gets hit on the back of that left arm. And Wagner 
Getting a visit from Pete Walker, the pitching coach. Wagner has thrown 40 pitches, and this bullpen has been roughed up lately. Since April 17th, their ERA is 7.24. That's 29th in the majors. They've allowed 25 runs, the most, also the most walks. The whip is 29th, and the base runners, they've allowed 51 base runners, and this is a bullpen that got off to a good start, but boy, they've hit a rough patch. Yeah, it all started on that cold, cold day at Minnesota, game two in that doubleheader. You all remember that? Eight walks in the eighth inning, and just haven't been able to come in and dominate like they were earlier. And Wagner misses up and into Jackie Bradley Jr. who's had a good night. He's been on base three times. Ball in a strike. You can link some of the bullpen issues to the short starts by the starters. They had pitched a lot early. And we're not even finished with April. I mean, that's the concern. And that's why the Blue Jays are contemplating the possibility of using a six man staff. Yeah, they've already said that Dustin McGowan is going to make his start, his scheduled next start. And Monday is their last off day for about 20 straight days. Then they get one and they play 13 more. So they're thinking about it and they're just talking about Jay Happ maybe flipping into the starting rotation and getting a couple of starts to stretch it out and creating their own off day. They will have Monday off and travel to Kansas City and then once they start the series in Kansas City. On the 29th of April they won't have an off day till the 19th of May. And then play again for almost two straight weeks again. Until. June 2nd, their next off day. So one off day until June 2nd. That's a lot of innings you got to cover. Bradley Jr. fouls off the 3 2 pitch. We're in the seventh, and the Red Sox broke things open early. They scored four runs in the second, a single run in the third, and two more in the sixth. All of the runs charged to Mark Burley. Bouncing ball and Carnacion will go to the bag. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Thank you, Jamie. Chris Archer on the mound for Tampa Bay and. You look at Tampa Bay, they've had so many problems in their pitching staff. And their starters have been dinged up. So Neil Wagner will leave. Todd Redmond will come in to face Dustin Pedroia when we come back.
Rogers customers can watch the Blue Jays on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. 29,411 here at Rogers Center for the Friday night opener of this three-game series against the Boston Red Sox. And this is not what they had hoped for when they sat down here tonight. Todd Redman will be the third Blue Jay pitcher to work. Redman in relief of Neil Wagner, who goes an inning into thirds. Runners at second and third. Dustin Pedroia takes a strike. Breaking ball outside. Redman. Pitched a clean inning in last night's game. He worked the ninth inning, had a couple of strikeouts. Ball and a strike to the Red Sox second baseman. There's strike two. Did that a couple of times last night where he, he dropped down on the right handers and had that comeback fastball on the outside part of the plate. You drop down like that to get a little bit more leverage on that pitch and make it move. Breaking ball hit to right. Bautista broke back quickly and gets there to make the catch. The inning is over. Red Sox strand a pair, but they have a 7 nothing lead. Jake Beauty, just four hits. Season with MLB.tv. Watch every out of market regular season game live or on demand in HD quality. Watch up to four games at once with multi game viewing. Season subscriptions start at $129.99. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. Jake Peavy shutting out the Blue Jays on just four hits. It'll be the number five batter, Neon and Navarro, to start things off. Hey, he has pitched some good games for Boston. Last year he got into 10 starts after he was traded over here from the Chicago White Sox. Seven of them he gave up three runs or fewer. And that's just what the doctor ordered for the Red Sox. Give me a veteran starter who can give me innings and keep me in games. It was a complicated deal when you consider it happened in the middle of the summer. Three teams, seven players. But the Red Sox got exactly what it needed. They got a shot in the arm with a good arm like Jake Peavy. Navarro hits it hard. Napoli will go to the bag. One down. We weren't going to let that magical season last year go to waste without having another arm. I mean, he's fit right in, too. I mean, he's one of those guys. Tough, hard nosed. 
gamer. Started his career with the San Diego Padres. He was an all star twice in San Diego, 2005 and 2007. Made the all star team in the American League with the White Sox in 2012. Juan Francisco has one of the four Blue Jay hits today. Hits this one way back. This ball is way up there. In the fourth deck. Juan Francisco hits his first Blue Jays home run. Tell you what, we were talking about transactions that go under the radar. This might be one of them for the Blue Jays right here. Towards the end of spring training, they picked him up off the waiver wire, and he's got tremendous power. Watch how he just follows that ball. That bat stayed on the hitting plane a long, long time. Fourth deck. Way up there above the retired number 12 of Roberto Alamo. That's a long way up there. Two hits tonight for Francisco. Well, if anybody can get over there, there's a ball sitting up there somewhere. Fred Laurie, 3 0. Oh. Francisco was signed by the Blue Jays to a minor league deal starting out the season in Triple A Buffalo and rejoined the big major leagues when Adam Lynn went on the disabled list. That home run still has the crowd buzzing here at Rogers Center. Brought them to life a bit. Murray will take ball four. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Laurie takes the second walk issued by Peavy and Rasmus checks his swing. So Peavy has thrown 107 pitches and Chris Capuano is loosening up and well, what an addition he has been to their bullpen. What a great number for Capuana. 13 innings, 8 hits. With John Farrell thinking where he's going to use him. First base umpire Jeff Kellogg with a delayed call foul and he had to jump out of the way standing right on the foul line and once he came back down on the turf he called it foul delay because he had to get out of the way right on that line ball and a strike he still got that comeback movement on the fastball Now, a lot of shifting going on now. Two strikes on Rasmus. That's Will Middlebrooks right next to the first baseman. This is even different than we have seen tonight. They keep the double play combination intact. Bogarts and Pedroia in their normal position. And Rasmus strikes out. Seven strikeouts now for Peavy. That one got right underneath his bat, too. 
Set him up with an inside pitch that he fouled, that one that he pulled foul, and then that other split change. Watch this ball. Diving down and away and right underneath the bat. With Kobe Rest, big strikeout for Peavy. Peavy is one off his season high, eight strikeouts. Ryan Goins is over two. Peavy struck out eight. Rangers at Boston on April 9th, and he got eight more strikeouts in a losing effort in Chicago against his former team, the White Sox. Right on the outside corner, Peavy is ahead 0 and 2. The inning is over. But Juan Francisco connects to break up the shutout. A one out home run, his first in a Blue Jays uniform, his 33rd big league home run. Shane Victorino takes a first pitch strength from Todd Redman. Victorino is 0 for 4 tonight. That's a fair ball. Just inside the line down the left field line, and Victorino has himself a leadoff double. Now, all nine regulars have a base hit tonight. Victorino was the last one to cash in. Bringing that energy to the lineup as he gets one by Lori down the left field line. Hit into a double play. Fly out, pop up, a ground out, now double. Victorino was a switch hitter, but he's hitting right handed now. Yep, he gave up the switch hitting last year. Had some injuries that. Created problems for him and he goes back to his natural side. David Ortiz, a home run and a walk. His home run came in the third inning. Redmond pumps that fastball right by. 
David Ortiz. And hey, he'll challenge those hitters with that fastball. Not afraid. Strikes out Ortiz on three fastballs. The drive of the game is brought to you by the 2014 Honda CRV. Honda, proud to be the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. You want to see somebody get it all? Right there, Juan Francisco got it all for tonight's drive of the game. Fourth deck homer. Right over by the name Roberto Alomar in deep right field. That's how you hit it. Mike Napoli has had a perfect night. A couple of walks. He's doubled and single. I don't know what it feels like to hit a ball like that. No. Nor do I. He's a big man and a powerful stroke, and he connected. I That's can 33 home runs now in the big leagues. I can imagine it feels pretty good. To be able to hit a ball like that and know that you can sit there and watch it if you want to. You and I could probably hit a golf ball like that, <laughs> but I can't. I can't hit a, or I never could hit a pitched baseball like that. He created some backspin on that baseball. Pretty good pitch, and Redmond didn't get the call. Shane Victorino's at second base with the leadoff double. Mike Napoli is locked in right now, not like Jose Bautista is. Locked in where he's seeing a lot of pitches and taking a lot of borderline pitches. He has reached base 20 consecutive games now, just like Jose. Bautista reached again tonight. There's a strike. 23 in a row now for Jose. Melky Cabrera extended his hit streak to eight games. But the Red Sox have a 7 1 lead. And Napoli checked his swing and fouled it off. It's a full count. Again, you notice Napoli choking up on the bat with two strikes. It's hit to short. Reyes takes his time, and that plays retired for the first time tonight. Blue Jay Honda Super Camps are presented by Baseball Canada and Little League Canada. Chatham, Ontario is the site June 23rd and 24th at Fergie Jenkins Field. The instructors include Roberto Alomar, Sandy Alomar Sr., George Bell, Dwayne Ward, and Devon White. Visit BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more information. The Toronto Blue Jays are proud supporters of amateur baseball across Canada. Johnny Gomes looks at the first pitch strength. Right to Goins. He was positioned perfectly. Gomes hit it hard. The inning is over. Red Sox have a 7 1 lead. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn.
Blue Jays getaway contest. Enter for a chance to win a trip to New York City for you and a guest to watch the Blue Jays take on the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. The prize includes round trip accommodations, spending money, and a VIP ballpark tour. The contest closes May 26, so make sure you sign up today. You can enter at BlueJays.com. Great opportunity. Go see the Blue Jays play on the road at Yankee Stadium. New pitcher for the Red Sox is Chris Capuano, the veteran lefty. He's now 36 years old. He's 36 in August, excuse me, and he's got nine years of big league service. All nine of those years over in the National League that he has spent, this is the first time in the American League, and it's worked out for him. Nine games this year, nine scoreless appearances, covering 13 innings for Chris Capuano. The Red Sox carrying three lefties in their bullpen right now, and Capuano is off to a great start. So Jake Peavy goes seven innings. He's in line for his first win of the season. Top of the order for the Blue Jays. Jose Reyes doubled his last time up. Reyes and Capuano obviously facing each other in the National League. Reyes is six for 20. That's a 300 batting average. Capuano has gone through two Tommy John surgeries. He missed the entire 2008 and 2009 seasons. The dreaded Tommy John for pitchers. And he's had two of them. Had his first one early in his career. Came up with Arizona, went to Milwaukee in 2004 through. 2007 and had those two years off. He reaches back for a little extra with the fastball and strikes out Reyes. Well, Jake Peavy had pitched well early in the season. He just didn't have anything to show for it. Came into this game with four total runs of run support. Red Sox got him four runs in the second and he did the rest. Seven innings, five hits, an earned run, a couple of walks, and seven strikeouts. Third lowest earned run average among major leaguers with at least four starts and no wins coming into the game tonight. Hard to believe as ERA just over three and haven't won a game. Tough to tough to win when you don't get any runs to work with. Ask Ari Dickey. Ari Dickey hasn't been getting any runs either. Dickey's run support is 155 in his starts. Ari Dickey will close out this homestand as he pitches on Ari Dickey bobblehead day Sunday afternoon to be opposed by John Lester. A battle of number ones. John Lester has a 15 and 7 career record against the Blue Jays. That's why it's hard to get runs when you're number one. You're always matched up the first month against the other team's number one. Capuano strikes out the first two. Well, Peavy had seven strikeouts tonight. He did it with a combination of pitches. Well, he first of all had a great split right there. The ball was going down in the first couple batters. Reyes and, and Cabrera had trouble picking it up. Then I thought his fastball had a lot more movement than I've seen over the years. A two-seam fastball was really running tonight. Jose Bautista doubled in the fourth. He has reached base in all 23 games this season. Capuano has really added to a pretty potent bullpen. The combination of Capuano, Junichi Tozawa, and Koji Uehara have gotten off to a great start. They have 37 strikeouts and just three walks. Veterans, they've been around. Add Miller to that uh, bunch. Andrew Miller and Mojica, who was a closer. 
I think it came over as a free agent after pitching with the Cardinals. <laughs> One and two. Strike three. Capuano comes in and strikes out the side. Blue Jays down in order in the eighth. We'll go to the ninth. Red Sox have a 7 1 lead. Red Sox, Blue Jays, tomorrow on Sports Night. Second game of the three game series and a good pitching matchup. Clay Buckles, who had a terrific start to his season a year ago, will go up against Brandon Morrow. Pat Redman misses with that first pitch breaking ball to his end of Bogarts. Clay Buckles. Will be 30 years old on August 14th. He was a 42nd overall pick in 2005. Bogarts hits a high fly ball to center. He's out. That's the first out of the night. Pat Redmond came into the game in the seventh inning with two outs. All he's allowed is a leadoff double to Victorino and. Victorino is stranded at second. He just comes in. He just throws strikes. He'll challenge you with the fastball. You're going to have to hit your way on. Boston was five and four at Rogers Center a year ago. AJ Brzezinski has had a two hit night. It's this one in the center. Rasmus on the run. He's not going to get it. Slams up against the wall. Brzezinski is headed to second base with his third hit of the night. That's his second double of the season. Three straight hits. For AJ Pierzynski, he's always been a low ball hitter. He goes down and he golfs that ball, almost sliced away from Rasmus. He's a fit right in now with Boston. Four very productive at bats tonight. They got a pretty potent left-right tandem behind the plate with AJ Pierzynski and David Ross, a couple of veterans with a lot of experience. Will Middlebrooks takes the strike.
pulls that breaking ball foul. Middlebrooks has had kind of a roller coaster ride early in his career with the Red Sox. He came up in 2012, hit 288 in 75 games with 15 home runs. Hits this off the end of the bat, breaks his bat. Reyes behind second. Uses that good arm to throw out Middlebrooks. Injuries might have had something to do with him going up and down. He had a broken wrist. And anytime you have any problems with your hands, you got to be 100% come back to get that power back in your swing. And obviously, younger players don't have the patience to allow their bodies to heal 100%. They want to rush back. Jackie Bradley Jr. That's another hit for Jackie Bradley Jr. down the left field line. He's headed for second. He's been on base four times. He has three extra base hits, two doubles, and a triple. And picks up an RBI. Hey, when you're hot, you're hot. He gets beat by this pitch from Redmond and somehow keeps it fair down the left field line. It will plate A.J. Pierzynski. 16 hits now for the Red Sox. Their lineup is whole again. Dustin Pedroia off to a fast start had hits in each of his first two at bats. Has since gone 0 for 3. He's 2 for 5 overall. This is a season high in hits for the Red Sox. The previous high was 14. Boy, that foul went right off the mask of Deanna Navarro. Time to get a timeout. Jays, you know, we talked about it at the start of this homestand right here. That, that this is going to be a big homestand for them. You got Baltimore coming in and now Boston as you see this ball foul right off the mask and jarred. Diva, Deanna Navarro. Well, the Orioles started hitting the ball. 12 hits on Wednesday, 14 last night. Red Sox have come in here and put up 16. Season high eight runs, it's season high 16 hits. They got contributions from everybody up and down the order. Each of the starters has a base hit tonight. Three balls and a strike to Dustin Pedroia. He takes a walk. Six walks and a hit batter issued by the Blue Jays tonight. So Shane Victorino will get another at bat. Victorino is one for five. Breaking ball and Redmond's ahead on two. Strike three. Dropped down and threw that fastball on the outside quarter. Red Sox are done in the ninth. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Boston has a seven run lead.
Coming up on Sportsnet on Eastern Ontario now, it's connected and Western Pacific. Dr. Arnaby, Major League Baseball, Seattle at Texas to take on the Mariners. And here it's all Red Sox as they have posted season highs in runs scored and hits allowed and the new pitcher. To work tonight, there's the big lefty, Andrew Miller. Ten games already this year for Andrew Miller. He's got a great fastball blazer. He's working on six straight scoreless appearances. Look what lefties have hit against him. That's that sweeping slider that he has. Just 071. Well, Miller is back. He had left foot surgery last July as he had a ligament problem and it took surgery to repair it. Yeah, it was a freak accident, if you will, on the mound, a freak injury. And they missed the playoffs, missed the World Series. At the time, a big blow for the Boston Red Sox. Breaking ball is fouled off the catcher. Miller was the number one pick of the Detroit Tigers in 2006. And he came to the big leagues that same year after appearing in just three minor league games. He pitched at North Carolina in the College World Series, and obviously he was impressive. Big, tall left hander with a big fastball. Made his major league debut against the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. Conacion rips it foul into the seats. He was the sixth overall pick that year in 2006. He's got good stuff. Edwin is caught looking at strike three. The bullpen has recorded four straight strikeouts. Capuano struck out the side in the eighth, and Miller strikes out in Carnacion to start the ninth. Yanner Navarro will turn around and bat right handed for the first time. Yanner has gone over three. The Red Sox last year had a lot of problems in their bullpen. Joe Hanrahan was their closer to start and he got hurt. Done for the year. Andrew Bailey then took over for him and he got hurt. And fortunately they had Koji Uehara as a setup man down in their pen and he moved into the closer's role and he had an epic season. I mean, he was nearly perfect. If you look at the numbers that he put up, he was the savior for the Red Sox last year. Now that bullpen shut down. I mean, total shutdown season for him last year. On the ground, Middlebrooks dives. Bogarts deep and short. And that pulls Napoli off the bag. Bogarts has arm strength. And Navarro will reach. Middlebrooks made a swipe at it. It was beyond his reach. Bogarts, the shortstop, made the play. Got a lot on the throw, but it's offline. He has got plenty of arm to make that play right there. Just 21 years old, and he's learning the position, trying to do the little things that it takes to be a big leaguer. He'll get there. Navarro's credited with an infield single. Juan Francisco. A two hit night, including his first Blue Jay home run in the seventh. Francisco for his career is the 175 hitter against lefty pitching. And he has never hit a home run against the left handed pitcher. 
he's going to get a chance to face some left-handers. We'll see John Lester. We're going to see a couple in Kansas City when we head there. One for sure in Pittsburgh. Liriano when we head there. Got to keep his bat in the lineup. Kansas City will be Bruce Chen and Jason Vargas, a couple left-handers in the three-game series. Oh, that is a nasty breaking ball. Miller got on top of it and really created that downward break. Two strikeouts for Miller. Really gets on top of it and sweeps it like we say. He's about six foot six and it creates great downward movement. This bullpen is second in the American League at earned run average. You can see why. Well, the Red Sox pitching staff has 12 strikeouts tonight. They lead the majors in strikeouts in March and April since 2013. They got some power arms. Brent Lorry. 0 for 2 with a walk. This is hit into the air. The draw you back. He calls for it, and that's the ball game. Henry Miller closes out the Blue Jays in the ninth with a couple of strikeouts and the Red Sox bats really came alive here in the opener eight runs on 16 hits and a good pitching performance from Jake Peavy. Yeah they get Jake Peavy to start it all on the mound but it's the A team the Boston Red Sox team their A team finally fielded for the first time this year and they respond with 16 hits and eight runs. David Ortiz hit his 50th career home run against the Blue Jays and he is the third all time home run hitter against the Jays and Ortiz has really made a name for himself since coming to Boston. The Red Sox take the opener in a big fashion and really made a statement early four runs in the second inning. Yeah that that offense you know working Mark Burley over 12 hits against Mark. The leadoff walk, he would come around to score. There's three strikeouts by the Blue Jay pitchers tonight. And that's what the Red Sox do. They make you work. And the Blue Jay hitters have struck out 12 times tonight. PV had seven. Papuano struck out the side, and Miller got two more. We'll do it again tomorrow afternoon. Brandon Morrow will go up against Clay Buckholz. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Connected. Coming right up.